Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disson. Today I am taking a look at the 2019 Razer Blade 15 Advanced model, the third in a series of thin and light gaming laptops. Next week I will be comparing it against the ASUS GX502GW and MSI GS65 Stealth, so make sure to subscribe to catch that smackdown. HID Evolution provided it to review and the specs of my unit is as follows. 15.6 inch 1080p 240Hz display, an i7-9758 6-core CPU, an RTX 2070 Max-Q GPU, which is a 90-watt part, a 1TB SATA M.2 SSD. For Wi-Fi, it's got the Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200. It's got an 80-watt hour battery and a 230-watt power brick. Also, the CPU and the GPU have been replaced with GLID GC Extreme. HID Evolution also applied a 30-day zero dead pixel warranty and they checked for backlight bleed. The price of my system is $2,899. Of course, you can configure it starting with a 2060, a 2080 Max-Q or even a Quadro RTX 5000, as well as having a 4K OLED touch display. Now, the model I have is the black edition, but you can also choose the mercury white model, which I think looks really nice. So to get inside, you remove 10 torque screws from this very stiff aluminum back cover. We have an 80 watt hour battery. Yeah, the M.2 PCI Express slot is here, but it also accepts SATA disks if you want to save some money. Now with uh, Razer, it's maximum of 512 gigabytes, but at least with HID Evolution, you can uh, put a four terabyte one in there. The RAM slots are also easily accessible and uh, with HID Evolution, you can get up to 64 gigabytes. But if you just do it through Razer, then you're stuck with a max of 16 gigabytes. The Wi-Fi card is easily accessible as well. That's the Intel Wi-Fi 6AX200. Uh, but we have a cable here, which uh, looks like the display cable. And underneath we have the, the vapor chamber cooling, which does do quite a decent job with two fans and we have two heat sinks. And the speakers are located here. So the, the keyboard deck has a lovely clean look. No crazy stickers anywhere. Just one at the top here, which of course is easily removed. I do like that. Now, of course, it's black, anodized aluminum finish, and uh, it is prone to a few smudges here and there, but all in all, it does clean off quite nicely. Now, you do have a large trackpad, which I find is very good. It's Windows Precision, uh, nicely centrally located, and I like that. Now, the keyboard has 1.2 millimeters of key travel, I personally find it okay, but some touch typists might find it perhaps a little bit too shallow. Now, there is an optical mechanical keyboard, which is 1.7 millimeters of travel and uh, has a slight uh, click to it. And you might prefer those if you're a touch typist. Unfortunately, the, back, uh, the, uh, the secondary function keys on that keyboard aren't lit up, which they are here. And I had the 1070 Max Q on and that had no secondary uh, functions lit up and it was driving me nuts. So, you know choose what you will. But anyway, there's uh, the speakers here, very nice big speakers with an integrated power uh, button here. So that works pretty well. And in terms of lighting, you can't uh, switch, you know, the lighting, uh, RGB lighting is fantastic, of course, but you can't switch different patterns here up with a key press, but you can alter the brightness as well as, of course, the, uh, the brightness of the panel. And these function keys can be switched to multimedia keys uh, using the software. Now the aluminum lid is also very good. Nice, clean look, ideal for a business use. Now, of course, you may say, well, the logo here is pretty bright, but it can be turned off, or you can have it so it just pulses as well, or breathes, so it's very nice. And of course, the panel itself is really rigid, really stiff, and the hinge is very stiff as well. Very good, good quality. So the Razer 15 will have most of the ports that you want. It does exclude an SD card reader, and an Ethernet port. But on the right, you do have a uh, Thunderbolt 3 port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, HDMI mini display port, and Kensington lock. And around the back, we have a very nice clean look. And finally, on the left hand side, we have the power connector, two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports, and a combo headphone mic jack. And its weight. Four pounds, 10 ounces with a power brick. Six pounds, five ounces. What I like about the power brick, it's got a nice braided cable here, which does help it from uh, getting uh, tangled up um, with a rectangular power connector here to keep it away from the ports. Also, there's a nice quality 
rubber strap here to keep it all in place. And finally, there's an activity light here to show that it uh, is powered up. So we have a 1080p panel, 240 hertz. Uh, the color gamut, 95% of sRGB, 72% of Adobe RGB, and 73% of the P3 color space. It's not so bright though, 263 nits, and a contrast of 850 to one. It's only a good gaming panel, and uh, you know, it probably is still okay for content creation. What I do like, of course, the bezels are really small, and you do have the webcam up top. Well, this is what the webcam's like, and it actually looks pretty good, and the microphone sounds pretty decent too. And when you're typing, so there you go, I think it's quite good. And it's got a handy Windows Hello camera at the top. Backlight bleed, very, very good. So taking a look at its airflow, cool air is brought in via the two fans, and actually through the keyboard. And also air is sucked in via these two fans here. And you'll notice a vent here for expelling the hot air and the long rubber feet stops the hot air being sucked back in. And you have some rear heat sinks, of course, for the air to be expelled. And when you open the lid, it doesn't block them off. All right, so let's have a look at the chassis temperature of this Razer 15. You can see immediately where cool air is brought in through the keyboard. And you can feel that on the keyboard too. It feels very good. So the center of the keyboard, of course, is just warm. That's like, okay, 42 degrees. It's not bad at all. And of course, towards the hinge area, yeah, it gets a little bit warm, but you don't touch that. The uh, trackpad area, that's certainly fine. But it's slightly warm. You can you can feel the warmth, but it's you know it's not uncomfortable. Let's have a look underneath. Again, you can see the fans there. Uh, the hot spot here. You know that's not too bad. I've seen in the mid 50s, so low 40s is certainly decent. Around the back, you see some nice air being pushed out of the right hand side. Speakers excellent. Around about 80 decibels or so. Very clear and good bass. So, good news, the Razer 15 passed my latency mon test, so it can handle real-time audio just fine. Razer uses their Synapse software. It allows you to disable the Windows key and Alt-Tab when you are gaming, as well as changing the function keys to multimedia keys. You can adjust the RGB lighting depending if you're on AC power or on battery. And this includes whether you want the Razer logo on the lid to be lit up, have it turned off, or breathing. You can also turn off the lighting when idle for a period of time or when the battery percentage falls to a certain level. Now there are two performance modes, there's balanced and custom, where the latter increases power to the CPU. Now strangely, the balanced mode lets you adjust the fan speed whilst the more powerful custom mode does not. And there is a difference when under load. Custom is quieter at 48 decibels versus the 53 decibels with the max fan whilst the idle fan is a nice quiet 33 decibels. You can assign a game to the software so that certain keys are lit up for that game, and I did find this a very useful feature. The RGB lighting on the keyboard is one of the best out there. It's very bright, and you have endless possibilities in its configuration. You can add several effects in a layer. You can change the color of each key individually, or draw your own pattern, or even paint the keys a color of your choice. Finally, you can create a macro to speed up your workflow. So, is there a difference between the balanced and custom profiles? Here is Far Cry 5 using Ultra settings, having balanced on the left and the custom high performance on the right. The extra 5 watts on the CPU helps it boost up by about 500 megahertz, and as a result, it does run a little bit hotter, but not terribly so. Not bad for a 48 decibel fan, to be honest. GPU utilization is greater, and thus we see a better frame rate as well. The 2070 Max Q peaks to about 92 watts, so let's see how it fares against the same GPU in the Lenovo Y740. The Razer 15 beats it by about 6%, with the 80 watt Dell G7 further behind. Using low settings sees an average frame rate of 120. But how about a multiplayer game like Battlefield 5? Here we have it at ultra settings. And we see the same story here. In custom mode, the CPU uses 45 watts versus 30 watts in balance mode, leading to a higher CPU boost clock, higher GPU utilization, and a higher frame rate. The GPU temperature is similar in the mid 70s, and the CPU does hit about 91 degrees in custom mode, but on the whole, it is good. I am puzzled why we just don't have fan control in custom mode though. Now this time around, 
the Lenovo Y740 beats the Razer 15 and the Mag 15 does the best of the bunch. If you are wanting to maximize frame rate, low settings in DX Lenovo will get you about 112 FPS. Now here is Overwatch using custom power profile, epic settings. Her performance is very good. I like how this setting doesn't try and push more than 45 watts to the CPU. There really isn't any need and it keeps the CPU generally below 90 degrees. Frame rate was similar to the Lenovo Y740 and a tad behind the Mag 15, so no complaints from me. And at low settings, you can finally make good use of the 240Hz display with a frame rate of 280. Here are four more popular games, and you can expect decent frame rates in them all. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a tough one, but fortunately, it's not a fast paced game. Competitive players will like 252 FPS using low settings in Rainbow Six Siege. In CPU work such as Cinebench R20 and Handbrake, the balance mode made no sense at all. The results were not good at all because of the low clock rate. I show the results using the custom mode. They are not anything special, perhaps average at best for the 9750H. If you rely on a fast CPU for your work, there are certainly better options out there. So how would I sum up the Razer 15? Well, it's a definite improvement over the 1070 Max Q version that I had. The keys have the secondary function keys lit up unless you choose the new optical keyboard. I wish the Max fan worked on the high performance custom mode, but even without it, the laptop cooled well enough with not too loud a fan noise. The speakers were awesome, very clear, good bass, and up there in terms of loudness. The webcam and inbuilt microphone were clear and gaming performance was good, although as one would expect, we only get close to the 240Hz refresh rate in eSports titles using low settings. Battery life of 6.5 hours was also good. Now you don't have G-Sync, but gameplay was very fluid and the 1080p screen looked good. I do wish it was a bit brighter, but the matte display coped well with reflections. I suspect anyone wanting it for top tier content creation may want to opt for the 4K OLED option. Now build quality is top notch. Sure, it uses aluminium rather than magnesium, so it's not the lightest of the bunch, but it's 4.9mm bezels ensures for a small and solid footprint. I wish it did have an SD card reader though. It's a strange omission when the 17 inch model has one. Its main Achilles heel may well be its price. It doesn't come cheap, but it certainly sets a high bar for other laptops to reach. I'd like to thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you for the Smackdown. Bye.